This program is brought to you by Dolku Media. Fixing South Sudan, ideas for the new nation. With award-winning journalist Mading Mor. Absolutely. Honorable Ashwin, as you can see, the ideas of the initiatives are varied. The July uh, on July 8th, uh, the clashes in J1 took place, which was very unfortunate. Including uh, country-specific ones, uh, which uh, the rebellion con continue to be. Fixing South Sudan, ideas for the new nation. Hello and welcome to Fixing South Sudan, your ideas for building the new nation. I am Adingor. This week on Fixing South Sudan, an exploration of how to achieve unity, cohesion and national consensus. Why is South Sudan at war with itself? What will it take to rescue the country from the pangs of corruption, nepotism, disease, underdevelopment, and ignorance. Joining us for the show is Honorable Akutluala Rej, a man whose bold initiatives elicit both admiration and indifference. He is former private secretary and personal assistant to General Salfa Kir Mayadi, the president of the Republic of South Sudan, and served as presidential envoy for defunct Pibor administrative area. He brokered an agreement between former warlord, current governor of Boma Estate, Honorable Yao Yao Jongkuj, with the government of South Sudan. His idea for fixing South Sudan, building cohesion, unity, and achieving national consensus to spur development. Akodlual, we are elated to welcome you. Fixing Sasuda. Welcome Thank to the show. Thank you very much, Comrade Medi, for inviting me How to Dolgo. How are you? I'm okay. Doing so good. We are happy to have you on Fixing South Sudan for the first time. Right now, the nation is searching for peace. How to achieve peace in the country? There is war, the economy is in turmoil. How do we achieve this thing called peace? We will achieve this. Because what is happening in our country is a man-made. So it is us, as South Sudanese, to sit down and agree and find a way forward. Uh, the war that is happening now is just about the positions. It is about who want to be who. But that one, I think it is just a matter of time. And we as a generation need to step up and do something about it. It is man-made, and peace can also be man-made. Yes. It is about positions. That's true. So how do we bring it then? The way to bring it is through the national dialogues, not going to Addis or Kenya or Uganda or anywhere else. The people who need peace are South Sudanese, and the majority are here. So to me, once our generations need to do something. We need to accept that fighting is not a way forward. We cannot rebel because we need positions. And even to make it worse, we are fighting on terms of our generation, the next generations, not on our own terms. You know our elders are the ones causing this. And I think it is the way that has been uh, working with the Arab in Sudan. You know, when you want to be a leader, you have to divide the rules. And this what now has been transported to us here in South Sudan. And our generation has been put to this mess to kill each other. And we don't know. There is no objectives here for war. What is going on is that my tribe mates or kind, my tribe kind is, you want to be a minister or you want to be a president. So. Each tribe are now fighting the tribe because of the leadership, nothing else. So it is time to sit down and say enough is enough and let us speak our country. National dialogue, homegrown initiative is better 
than the one that is being sponsored by foreigners. You are saying, as a court law, that let's look to Juba for a solution and not to Addis Ababa. Yes. Now, it's difficult to achieve consensus, and this is part of what we are talking about. People see the world from different perspectives, and everyone feel right. So how do we convince ourselves to see it from one perspective so that we all go and support the national dialogue? You know why it's difficult? It is because our leaders, who started the SPLA, SPLM in 1983, are the ones still running show today, think that they are the only leaders. There is no other leader in South Sudan. They are the only one. And they are the one now in Addis and Kenya and Uganda running the show. And even here in South Sudan, these are the same group. Let's be honest, this group have, died, they have done their part. They liberate this country. This time is not their time. We should give them credit. Yes, they gave back the country. But this time now is for the next, for the other generations. And you know what makes things worse? The group of 1983 are dividing themselves to group. First group, they think that those who were in high command, Dr. Yon, Salva Kir, William Yon, Carbino, and Arakton, are the first layer. And then now, the other group who could not get a chance to go to high command, believe that they are second layer. And these are the people who, want, who believe that it is their time to rule now. But not, that's not the way it works. The way it works, they are all one generation. And they have done what they have done. They liberate the country, and the credit go to all of them. And they, this time is not their time. And they don't understand that. But to them, they think that they are the only South Sudanese, the only leaders who will say, let us go to north, or go to south, or go west and east. And that's where the problem is. We, as a generation, we don't have confidence in ourselves. Uh, let's come to the specific of what you are proposing. You are actually saying that the youth are the one who should be given a chance now, and yes. the elders should go? Or are you saying you give, create more space for the youth to bring in some change? You create more for next generation to come in and bring new ideas, inject more ideas. In the state of group of 1983, just sitting there thinking that they are the only one. That one is wrong. Uh, you talk about the next generation. Are yes. you talking about yourself? Who, who are the next generation? The next generation is me, not me. Yes, it might be me, but also you. We are the next generations. And uh, what do you think we can do differently from those who, whom you are saying that they have not succeeded as much as people talk about it? What we need to do differently is to unite the tribe of South Sudan because we are divided along the tribal line. And this is the job, and this is the mission of our generation to do. Because each generation has the mission. The mission of generation of 1983 is to liberate the country, and they have done that. What's our mission as next generation? Unite the tribe of South Sudan. And when you see the divisions that are going on, uh, you know, tribalism is a factor, nepotism is a factor, corruption is a factor, when you talk about uniting people, what is the agenda for uniting South Sudan around? The agenda, first, you, as Madingar, what do you want to contribute to this country? What is your mission? And I have to ask myself, what can I do to this country? First, you know you cannot solve all these issues at once. Take one at a time. Let's say unity. How do you unite the tribe? One we must accept ourselves as South Sudanese. That should be our motto. And when we accept ourselves, what do you do as a Dinka? You are a Dinka. Majority. What is the role of majority? Accept a small tribe, let us live together. Because it was not your choice to be a Dinka. It is God who created you to be a Dinka. What about the small tribe like a Shifo? Who brought that tribe to this nation? It is God. If we accept all of us, we are one family. 
one nation, then now we'll find the common ground to live as the brothers and sisters, except ourselves. But it's and not that's one. Two, come to corruptions. Corruption will come in when you certain group find themselves in a position that they want to benefit and they don't even look down. The job or the duty of the big tribe is to take, small, take care of the small tribe. That's my belief and that what I see it can also help us in this crisis. Let us take care of the small tribe instead of just fighting each other, seeing that we are important than others. Noer believe in that, Dinka believe in that, other tribes like Latuka or Zande believe in that. This idea need to, we need to abandon this idea and need to educate our people that all of us are one, we are equal, and we have, you know, in the, let's say in your house, when there is a food, you have to make sure the younger one get the portion before you eat. Why? Because the younger one will cry. That is the source Sudan we want. But yes. Is that what is happening? What the others, uh, the non Dinka, are talking about is that the cake is not being shared equitably. Yes. There is no uh, fair distribution of resources. And only some people are taking the national wealth. So how do we address that? The way we address that is what I've been talking about. You know, let, let us say if there is a food in the table. It should not just be about talking. Yes. It's also about, about doing it. Con yeah. And who will do that? It is our generation who will do that. It is not the old generations because old generations have died that part. Now what is going on now, the fighting that is going on, one thing, without, if we stop fight, then we can be able to address the others. But if we are fighting, there is no, way, there is no chance now to sit down and divide the cake. Can we stop the war and then let us divide the cake? And now we are not agreeing on what to do. There is the high level revitalization forum that is uh, going on in Addis Ababa. And do you think it can also be a contributing factor for ending the war? I will not say that that one will not be a factor, but I'm saying that one can be a part. But to find the inclusive or to find the comprehensive peace in South Sudan, the majority of South Sudanese are here in South Sudan. They are not in Addis or anywhere. So to me, I believe in national uh, dialogues. National dialogue will include everybody, and that peace will bring everybody on board. So. What is going on at is, yes, you can see people are just negotiating themselves in. They need positions. Okay, when they get it there and they come here, and majority are here, and we say no. If that is a way, that is a way to get to the government position, who would rebel? And then go back to Addis. Do you think it will work that way? That's not the way. What they should agree there is to bring a peace. It's a peace. And when they agreed, in principle, let them come back here in South Sudan and we'll choose who should be where. That's South Sudanese. Let's take a break from here. Yeah. Welcome to Dolco Media Services. We have so many services for you, such as video production, camera hiring, sound system hiring, Event management, passport photo, stand up comedy, printing, drama, music, dance, multimedia, and photography. Dolk Media Services, our culture, our pride. Welcome back to Fixing South Sudan, your ideas for building the new nation. I am Adingo, and with us is Honorable Akut Lwala Rej, former private secretary and personal assistant. President of the Republic of South Sudan, General Salfa Kiir, how to achieve national unity consensus. How do we do it? When we talk about bringing peace, everyone needs a position. And you know one or two things about that because you have a track record for brokering a peace, and you did that in the case of former warlord General uh, Yao Yao. You made him from zero to lieutenant general and governor. So 
coming back to the case of Yao Yao, the criticism has been why reward uh, rebellions? Why reward people who kill South Sudanese like David Yao Yao? So now we have a problem of how to achieve peace uh, by giving positions. And you are saying that uh, the talk in Addis should not proceed because we are talking about positions. Uh, and you have already done that. So coming to the case of Yao Yao, what was your intention? My intentions, first of all, <laughs> Yao Yao is not a warlord. <laughs> He's like any other rebellions in South Sudan, like Matibo or any abode, anybody who rebels. Uh, let me talk about Yao Yao particularly. Yao Yao, when he rebels, according to him, it was not to fight government of South Sudan. He was fighting government of Jungle. That was initial. And Jungle is part Jungle. of South Sudan. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, you are right. And uh, I think what Yao Yao was looking for and what disappointed him, that was 2010 elections. Actually, I, what I'm trying to know is yeah. why did you intervene? It's the reason I intervened, reasons, okay. But why did you intervene? The reason I intervened, you know, when the uh, rebels here, he was in contact with Yahweh. And they were going to join forces and come and attack Jiba. We say, okay, if this thing happened, why don't we divide them? We have to divide the enemy. So I went and contacted Yahweh. And I flew there and convinced him that you don't need to engage with Mashar. Even though Mashar was in contact on a daily basis with, with uh, Yao Yao. So me, my intervention was to stop Yao Yao not to join the war. That was the whole thing. And if he had joined the war, what would have happened? <laughs> it, all of us would know what would happen, even yourself. If he was in Juba that time, let's say if Mashar and uh, Morley come, they were going to capture Bibor if Yao Yao accept to do that without any doubt. And then now, the white army will come from Laonair coming to Bor, and then they will march to Juba. And you see what happened in Bor yourself when the white army came, without Morley. It was going to be a mess. And this is what we were calculating. Without that, when I went to Yaweao, there was already a group of Noir in the area, in the, under command of Peter something is a brigadier. He was in the area and they were merging and they want to advance. And if they agreed to come here, it was going to be a lot of mess and that's what we were seeing. So you saved the situation? I, yes, I did. I saved the situation, yeah. And an administrative uh, area was created as a result of uh, the peace initiative that eventually was negotiated in Addis Ababa. Yes. And when you look at solving our problems and bringing peace and achieving unity yes. in the country, everyone, every region has its own yao yao. Yes. So how do we bring everyone together now? You know, this thing is not happening. It's in, yao yao was not the first. Metib was the first one when we signed the peace and we implement the CPA. President himself negotiated the peace between him and, and uh, Metib. And that how about 60% of Nuer were integrated in the SPLA. And if we didn't do that that time, there would be no independence of South Sudan. So that should be the starting point from there. And this is what we, it follow, including the peace of Yao Yao. So to me, yes, the case is different from area to area. But at the same time, there is a solution for it. What we don't have now, or what we are lacking, there are few people who believe that they are the one who should, even myself, I did that. But the group uh, in top, um, let's say group of 1983, they will see me like, a, I'm a young man. It is not my time. I don't know anything. They are the one who know everything. People ask, what motivates you? Is it? opportunity or is it genuinely about trying to help it was genuinely trying to help because it was about opportunity what would i gain if i go there and you will kill me 
because I've never known Yao Yao before. I've never been in contact with them before. You cannot just jump in the plane and go to the bush about getting opportunity. You alone, you cannot do it. But I love these nations, and I feel that it is our time. And there are people who die before us for these nations. What can we contribute to South Sudan? As a person, I feel that was the time I have to do something. When you talk about the liberation struggle, you yourself participated in. Yes. And when you look back to those days, are you sad that the unity that used to exist is no longer there? I'm very sad because that time, 1983, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, until the end, people were very united. And I saw the leaders who give their life to this country. Now their children are in the street here. Their women are the ones baking here. What makes you happy if you see that? And if their fathers were alive, they could be in best school today. We did not fight for that country. It is not the country I was affecting. As a child, I thought that we would liberate this country and we take care of our widow and orphans. But that's not the case now. You have been taking a message of peace around the country. You have been trying to involve other tribes in governance. Uh, what are some of your uh, initiatives that you have taken and that you intend to take to achieve unity, cohesion, consensus? Because it has to be practical at the end of the day. It One, cannot be just talk, talk, talk. Yes. The initiative I took so far, we have a group now, and that group we form the NGOs called National Peace and Initiative. These NGOs we go to liberated, or I mean to the war areas, deliver food. We have studied in some areas in barracks, let's say even in Wow. When we took the food to Wow, we went even to Iowa and give them the food. And we told them, look, we are so Sudanese. At the end of the day, you will come back, we'll sit there, the brothers and sisters. So you belong to this country. If you have a case, let us sit down and discuss. Lay down the guns. And some of them hear this message, and they came. And we give them food. We give food to their families. Now we are planning to go to other areas like Shulu Kingdom, because those people have been in a place that they feel they are forgotten. We want to take the message of unity, and we want them to feel like they're part of this country, and we want to take the message of the president. That president did not forget about you. We'll go to Malakal and go and talk to the people in the UN. Tell them, look, this is not your place. Come out. We want to help the government there and unite the tribe there. Because Malakal, you get Shiluk there, you get Noe there, and Dinka there. And among them, they are fighting each other. I feel it is a part and the role of my group to play, and we are going to work on that. When you take relief uh, around the country, what message do you get from those IDPs, those who are in very bad conditions, as a result of the man-made situation that you talked about? The message you can get sometimes is you cry. Because what they need is not about food. It is about seeing South Sudanese coming together. Yes, food is important, but also to go as a Dinka and Noir, Latuka and Bari and all this as a group and go and sit and talk to them. They feel that this is South Sudan they want. So they are seeing unity. They are feeling happy. Like in Wow, there were some who went without to the IDPs. Some of them were from their tribe. And they could not believe that there are some who are not Dinka in the government or in the group who want to bring all tribe together. So that message alone is very powerful. When you talk about national dialogue, it's about talking about more than just power distribution. Yes. It's about seeing what is the problem of the society. Yes. Are you saying there's another way of doing it or the way it is being done? Uh, 
I think it is, there are many ways to solve the problem. You try this way. If it doesn't work, try another way. If it doesn't work, call the group, sit down, find the solution, and solution will be found. That's one. Number two, you know, when you are a leader, and uh, you have people divided uh, around you, that is a problem. And that will have to go apart. Because there will be no support within the circles. And when there is no support, many things will go wrong. When we talk about fixing South Sudan, it is a very ambitious agenda, but one that is necessary. Is it possible to fix South Sudan? Possible. When we went to the bush in 1983, even Salfa or Dr. Yon were not sure that they will liberate South Sudan. There was a Nyanya one who tried and they failed. A Nyanya two came and they tried and they failed. Then SPLM now. SPLM was not confident that they were going to liberate South Sudan, and they have done that. Why is it not possible for us to fix South Sudan? It's possible to fix South Sudan? Yes, it's possible. What do we need to do to fix South Sudan? What we need to do is to have confidence to ourselves that each of us can play a role, and we need to accept ourselves live together, and we'll fix the problem. Akodwal, thanks for being on the show. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks.